Let's go a bit more into these emotions. As human beings, we are all an energy. We're all a vibration. We're a mass of these vibrating cells. When we're vibrating faster, we feel lighter and we feel happier. When we're vibrating slower, we feel more down. It's harder to get things moving, right? This is Dr. David Hawkins' scale of consciousness. So all those emotions we have have a vibration as well. If you look down the left-hand side here, you'll see a list of all the emotions, all the positive in the blue, all the negative in the yellow. As human beings, every single one of us in our own little way are going about life trying to feel these higher states. We all want to feel love. We all want to feel joy. We all want to feel peace. We all want to feel connected with each other. Would you agree? Absolutely. Then we go through life and life happens, experiences happen, and we start to accumulate these negative emotions down the bottom here. We start to go through life and accumulate guilt, shame, anger, fear, sadness, hurt, and we start to get slower and heavier. Because what happens, our emotions, especially our negative ones, they're feedback. It's a feedback mechanism. So take guilt for an example. Guilt's like a tap on the shoulder that says, Oi, Ryan, you've just done something outside of your personal standards. And then we're meant to let guilt go. But we don't. We hold on to that son of a bitch for weeks and months and years. And we do that with the other negative emotions as well. And as we accumulate and accumulate and suppress these emotions, we're dragged down the bottom of this scale. When we get dragged down the bottom of this scale, this is when we start to see mental illnesses and addiction start to manifest. This is when we start to manifest depression, anxiety, uh, bipolar, borderline personality, whatever label you want to put on it, we feel shit. Okay? Then what happens? Those higher states, that love, joy, peace, it gets harder and harder for us to feel. They come by rarer and rarer. And sometimes we go months and months without even feeling them at all. This is when the coping mechanism comes along. Yeah? This is when drugs, alcohol, gambling, shopping, sex, porn, video games, work, gym. We'll find whatever works for us. Whatever coping mechanism will, for a short amount of time, cover up this stuff. Okay? This is why there's so many different types of addictions. We'll keep going through them until we find which one works for us, okay? And it can be, you know, as I said, it can be work. It's funny, the workaholic or the work addict gets rewarded by society, <laughs> whereas the ice addict or the heroin addict gets stigmatized. It's very interesting. So what happens? We get relief from all these negative emotions. We get relief from being stuck down here for so long. And all of a sudden we get a feeling of these higher states. We feel a bit more joy. I've got some more energy. Maybe my anxiety's gone away. No wonder we use drugs or go back to that kind of stuff. It's giving us relief. It's a solution to the problem. And you can look at it consciously and go, that's a pretty shit solution. <laughs> it's causing so much havoc in your life, but it works on a subconscious level. But the problem is with that, it's temporary. As soon as we stop the usage or the behavior, whatever it is, we come crashing back down to the level of our suppressed emotions. And this is why we keep going back and going back and going back because we feel bad again and our brain's like, how did I feel good last time? Oh, that's right. I smoked ice or I shopped, or I gambled, you know, we'll find whatever works. Does that make sense? So the idea is to locate when we are holding on to these heavy emotions from certain events throughout our life and be able to go back there and process them and release them so we can start to move up this scale naturally. Okay, as soon as we feel those higher states without the behavior, without the drug, it no longer needs to exist because the problem that it was solving is not a problem anymore.